Legend Summer Preview with the Dice Tower. In this series, we look at recently released and upcoming games for Summer 2014. And now, recorded live at Origins 2014, here is your host, Tom Vassell. All right, folks, welcome back to Origins 2014. With me is Stephen from Yellow Games. Welcome to the show, Good sir. Good to see you. This is not a normal game that we might see from Yellow. It's a, a war game. I don't think you guys have done one of these before. This is a little bit of a branch out for us. This is a uh, tactical simulator of World War II, kind of uh, uses the real life battlefield and then integrates a little bit of uh, Hollywood uh, throwback movies for World War II as well. Right, but you know, most time I see war, uh, games, war games, they seem somewhat complicated. This one here says 30 minutes on the box. Uh, it's 30 minutes. Um, it's a little bit of setup time, uh, probably 10, 15 minutes of setup time, but each skirmish is about 30 minutes. Uh, there's a turn tracker that uh, maximum of eight turns in the first scenario, which we have set up here. There are six turns and I haven't seen it go six turns yet. All right, tell us how it works. Sure, so it's a uh, small tactical uh, system where you have different units <coughs> or squads associated with the American side and with the uh, German side. And in the system, you can move all of your units each turn, which is a really nice feature. Some of the units can be activated via these tiles, these order tiles that are placed secretly uh, from your opponent, and they will activate units uh, in order of uh, uh, sequence. There's some bluff. Uh, there's a bluff tile for each side as well, right. and the bluff tile allows you to kind of keep some mystery as to which units are going to be firing or moving. Any of the units that have an order uh, assigned to them are capable of moving before the other units and are also capable of firing. Then there's a kind of a resupply phase at the end where any units which didn't move or fire may move only. So every unit is able to move every turn. You aren't stuck where you don't have a particular uh, key component to be able to move your critical unit that you need to be able to move to uh, carry out your plan. All right. So is the goal to eliminate your opponent? Uh, there are several scenarios in the uh, uh, base set that uh, provide different descriptions of a setup scenario. There's also an open play version where we each draft uh, uh, units from a uh, pool of units uh, for each side and then use those to, uh, to battle out to each side. But uh, it's not designed to be every down to every last man. Uh, it's designed to be uh, turn-based and then whoever's uh, leading in the, in the uh, game. Now you mentioned firing and shooting. How does that work? It's actually uh, quite awesome in that they have all the information you need is right here on the tile. <clears throat> so everything about movement is in blue. Movement is also reflected here on the board in blue in that uh, heavy and light armor units can't cross this terrain, uh, hence the uh, blue movement arrow with the no-go symbol on it. Uh, the remainder of the uh, information is here on the tile as well. For instance, the defense in yellow tells us that this is a uh, infantry unit with a defense of four. And this attack bonus in yellow tells us that when this unit attacks infantry, they get a bonus of two added to their die roll. This maroon color tells us that a bonus of two is also uh, for the unit when they attack light armor. And then the gray is always a heavy armor, and for heavy so armor for this. they can attack heavy armor. They cannot attack heavy armor okay, uh, for this. Okay, that makes sense. Right. Over here on the side are any special abilities. This unit has the ability to assault or uh, overrun another unit. They also have the ability of suppressive fire, which is a different die rolling mechanic that allows you to uh, penalize uh, an opponent uh, squad and uh, keep them at bay. Also in the unit, uh, this tells us that when this unit is hit once, the tile flips over. And on the flip side, some of the stats change. So the defense actually goes up because there are fewer units and the guys are cowering and the bonuses go down a little bit as well. Now if this unit is hit again, there's the uh, skull with the red, that tells us this unit is eliminated. Some of the other units may show uh, a camouflage capability or a paratrooper capability. The paratrooper capability allows you to deploy at uh, game onset further into the enemy's territory, and the camouflage capability allows you to flip the tile over and you become camouflaged anytime you're in cover. While you're in cover, you can't be targeted, you can't uh, suffer the effects of shrapnel, um, uh, so it's a, a great asset to be able to camouflage and, and uh, protect your team a little bit. Now you're talking about the different bonuses. When you shoot someone, are you rolling dice? Yes, normally we'd roll one die. Um, we have a custom dice for the uh, US 
and for the Germans. Oh, nice. Uh, the uh, six has been replaced by a large symbol for each, and then the smaller symbols for uh, one through five. So you're rolling one die normally. Uh, some of the benefits allow you, some of the cards allow you to roll two dice and choose your highest result. But uh, in essence, the uh, the game is based on a one die roll and then modified by whatever particular uh, terrain cover you have, uh, any bonuses that are granted as well. I see we have these decks of cards here. What are these for? Sure, the decks of cards are used uh, also in the game. They can be used, as you can see, they're uh, quite, a, quite a bit of variety with the cards. There's a lot of them. They can be used in different phases of the game. So, for instance, here uh, says movement or attack. These have order on them, order again, defense. So during the appropriate phase of the game, you can use these cards to uh, alter the rules, essentially. How Maybe do you get to re-roll a die result, etc. How do you get the cards? So you're given four cards at the beginning of the game. Uh, at the end of every turn, you replenish your hand of cards. So we really encourage the use of the cards to be able to kind of alter the battle flow. There's no penalty. Also, at the end of your turn, you're able to turn in and discard any cards that you don't want to keep and draw a new card. So you'll so always cycle pretty quickly. Cycle very quickly and uh, really become a critical part of the game. I know this is a lot of different pieces. I mean, we got these giant tank pieces. There's rooms here, and I see back over there a giant, all that cardboard. Yeah, this game is uh, this game's great. It comes with uh, six uh, double-sided map tiles. Comes with, I haven't even counted the number of uh, tokens with it. Um, and again, this is a more busy uh, tile here. This tile shows uh, quite a bit with uh, burst fire, suppressive fire, also cannon blasts, um, as you can see. But again, all the information is here on the car, uh, here on the tile, and you don't need to be referring to uh, to uh, tables or anything in the book. There's a uh, interesting template system as well for recruiting, in that uh, this template uh, in particular <coughs> shows that. If you recruit this template, if we're playing an open game for 70 points, you're going to get these four units, which I have out on the board currently. Then you have the capability, if you want to add in, say, ammo. Ammo gives you three markers that allow you to add one to each roll. I could add in grenades as well. And there are three little grenade markers also. Oh, so these are basically, you can put them in to upgrade your units? Exactly. So there are the tiles that have to match, they have to match in size, and then the bands on the side also restrict you from making kind of the the uh, nonsensical combinations of the units. I see. So. And so this is a, um, basically, even though there's scenarios in the book, you can also build an army out of oh, points absolutely. to go up against somebody else. Right, and the scenarios are a nice balance between just teaching the game to you and introing it and actually part of the game that, that you can play the scenarios over and over, switch sides, but there's also that open play as well, which works very well with recruitment points. Are there any specific battles that this covers? Uh, right now, the uh, expansions cover Carrington. There's a Pegasus Bridge expansion. Uh, those two particular expansions aren't completed yet. There's a D-Day expansion with beach tiles, uh, a lot more markers. Um, there's a river set with river tiles. Uh, and each of them also have uh, heroes that come. So here's Clint, not named after any particular Clint, just any Clint. And uh, here we have uh, John Marvin, uh, who looks like a particular uh, resemblance to an actor as well. So uh, these hero tiles are included in every set as well and kind of add a, an interesting uh, theme to it. All right, this looks good. So when does this come out? This is actually out in some stores now. We just received it in our warehouse. Uh, we actually had it overnighted here to uh, Origins to have available for the fans of Origins. But uh, if it's not in uh, stores uh, around you now, it'll be there very shortly, within a week or two. Looks really good. Looks like there's a lot of depth in the box. There is. Uh, a lot of pieces here. A lot of things. Looks a lot of fun. It's a great game. I love it. Thanks for showing it to us, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. See you. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you join us for the rest of our summer preview videos. We'd like to thank Gamma and Origins for making these videos possible. And we hope that all of you have fun gaming. See you next time.